Today I'd like to talk about hyphema. So let's start off with the case. You have a 58-year-old male coming in after a MVC. Airbags were deployed, minor damage to the vehicle, but now he's having a lot of pain to the right eye and a little bit of decreased vision. On physical exam, the right eye has normal visual acuity, but the left eye can really only see light and dark distinction. Extraocular movements are intact. So looking at this picture, what two abnormalities can you diagnose just from looking at this patient? Good, so hyphema and blood ecchymosis. And which of these two are more concerning? Excellent, hyphema. So hyphema is the more concerning one, especially because this is a complete one, a 100% or grade four, um, also known as eight ball. Bloody chemosis will resolve on its own, although it should note that with complete surrounding chemosis like this patient has, there is a higher risk for other injuries such as globe rupture, so make sure and rule those out. So what is hyphema? Hyphema is blood in the anterior chamber after blunt or penetrating injury. In blunt injury specifically, it causes stretching of the ciliary body or the iris, which causes the vessels to tear and leak into the anterior chamber. Now there's two complications that we think about with hyphema, and that's increased intraocular pressure and re-bleeding. Now increased intraocular pressure is caused from the blood in the anterior chamber clogging up the trabeculae and causing a traumatic glaucoma, and that can lead to optic nerve atrophy if the ocular pressure remains high for long enough. Rebleeding usually occurs about two to five days after the initial injury, and it's from a second hemorrhage when the clot's disrupted. This can also lead to increased intraocular pressure and glaucoma, and can also cause corneal blood staining. In other words, both of these can lead to permanent vision loss. Now, what population is especially at risk for complications if you see them in the ER with a hyphema? sickle cell patients. So in a patient with sickle cell disease, they can really only tolerate increased intraocular pressure of greater than 24 for about 24 hours before they have irreversible ischemic damage to the optic nerve, and that's Goldberg's rule. So make sure you keep that in mind. These patients are especially at risk. Other people considered at risk who have a hyphema are those with large hyphemas, so filling greater than one-third or 33 percent, those with a high intraocular pressure initially, so greater than 22 to 24. Again, we mentioned sickle cell patients or those at risk to sickle cell disease who may not know that they have it, anyone else with bleeding disorders or on anticoagulation medications, and also those that are at higher risk for re-bleeding are young children that can't sit still, and we'll talk a little bit more about discharge care in just a moment. And you can see here that patients with greater than 33% of anterior chamber filling do start to have a worse prognosis. So let's talk about treatment for hyphema. Well, first of all, let's give them some pain relief. So you can either do tetracaine or something systemic like a Vicodin. Make sure and ask about a history of sickle cell, and if it's unknown, make sure to send a sickle dex. And then lastly, consider a cycloplegic such as scopolamine, 0.25% or cyclopentylate 1%. You should also make sure to use an eye shield for these patients to protect their eye and increase the head of bed. The elevation actually helps aid in clearance of the hyphema. And lastly, make sure to get an ophthalmology consult. This is a patient that you want them to see either in the ER or as an outpatient. So let's talk about disposition. If they're one of those patients that's on the list of high risk that we talked about before, they need inpatient management. If they're not high risk, it's pretty safe to manage them as an outpatient with daily evaluations by ophthalmology. So if you do decide to send them home, there's actually a pretty strict regimen that you have to have them on to prevent the complications that we talked about daily evaluations by ophthalmology as an outpatient because they have to check intraocular pressure daily. Next, you need to limit their activity. So tell them to have their head of bed up, sit at an angle, make sure they're in a quiet setting, and they also need to use that rigid eye shield for about one week. Lastly, you can consider some different medications with ophthalmology recommendations, cycloplegics, topical steroids, acetazolamide. Again, talk with ophthalmology about this to determine what you want to recommend. And always keep in mind that if the hyphema is not resolving after about 10 days or if it's a very large persistent hyphema, they might need surgical evacuation. So three to remember for hyphema is that it's a bleed in the anterior chamber of the eye. The two complications that I want you to remember are increased intraocular pressure and re-bleeding in about two to five days. Both of these can lead to permanent vision loss. For disposition, if there are any of those high-risk patients that we talked about, either sickle cell, a large hyphema, or someone that you think is at risk for re-bleeding, you need to admit those patients. If they're low risk, they need to have daily ophthalmology checks to ensure that the hyphema is resolving. Here are the references, and thanks for joining us on EMN5.